Hi everybody, this is Susan Elliott, author of Getting Past Your Breakup, Getting Back Out There, and the Getting Past Your Past Workbook. Now, one of the things that people always ask me about from getting back out there are the five R's, the bumps in the dating road. Now, I have said a hundred million times that getting back out there is not a dating book. Please do not wait until you're ready to date or are ready to think about dating before you get it. One of the things that's very important in getting back out there is the standards and compatibility inventory. This is something that you should be thinking about as soon as you break up your other relationship. And getting back out there goes into how to design your standards and compatibility inventory. By the time you get to the relationship inventory and in getting past your breakup, you should absolutely have getting back out there and you should be doing the standards and compatibility inventory and relationship inventory side by side. It's very important. And there's a lot of different things to think about with the standards of compatibility inventory. So I really urge you to get getting back out there. It's not a dating book. <laughs> Long before you're getting ready to date. You will learn about healthy communication. You will learn what a healthy relationship looks like. You will figure out how to bring up different questions when you're in a new relationship or when you're thinking about being in a new relationship. And now that I've said that getting back out there is not a dating book, I want to talk about the part of it that is a dating book. Okay. The five R's. The five R's are the bumps in the dating road. The first one is readiness. Are you ready? Many people think they're ready, then they go on a dating site, or they get a fix-up through a friend, or they, they go to some sort of party where there's other people, they think they're ready, and then all of a sudden they think that they're not. There's a lot more to am I ready than am I ready. One of the questions is, what are you ready for? And people don't even think about that. Now... One of the stories that I tell in Getting Back Out There, and I've told this, I think I've told it on a podcast, the Getting Past Your Breakup, Getting Back Out There, Getting Past Your Past podcast is called Getting, no, it's, it has no getting in the title, it's called Mean Lady Talking. If you want to know why it's titled Mean Lady Talking, go to the first episode of Mean Lady Talking podcast and that will explain it all. But anyway... Get the Mean Lady Talking podcast. I think I mentioned this on a podcast because I've done a couple of standards and compatibility podcasts. I'm going to do another one today. Anyway, there was a woman that was a client of mine, and she broke up with her longtime relationship. And they live in the same neighborhood. They live on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And she was crossing the street one day. And lo and behold, what did she see across the street? Her ex, that she'd only been separated from a couple of weeks, having breakfast with another woman. She lost it. Lost it, lost it. She was hysterical. I had to see her. It was an emergency. Oh, my goodness. She was just sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. That Saturday night, her friends dragged her out. They're like, you're coming dancing with us. She did not feel like going dancing. She didn't want to go dancing. Her eyes were red from crying all week. She didn't want to go. They forced her to go. She put on a little black dress, little dancing heels, and off she went. They went to a club down in Greenwich Village. And they're out there dancing, you know, just girls dancing. And this young guy, and she's in her early 40s. She has two teenage girls. This guy's in his late 20s, a really good-looking guy. He starts dancing with her. She starts dancing with him. They have this amazingly flirtatious night. He says to her, can I get you a cab home? So she says, yeah, but then he wants to get in the cab. And she goes, you know, you're not coming to my house because she's a single mom. And she doesn't want him coming up to her house. She lives in a doorman building, so she wasn't worried that he was going to try to barge his way in. And she decided that she wasn't even going to get him to drop her off at her building, she was going to get him to drop her off like down the block. So they get in the cab together. He goes, no, 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 I don't want to go into your house. I just want to make sure that you get home okay. So she goes, okay. 
they make out like teenagers in the back of this cab. I mean, she said it was just passionate, crazy, crazy, crazy making out. She said she had the best time. And in Manhattan traffic, even though it was late at night, you know, Manhattan traffic is always like that. It took them a while to get up there. So she said they just had a great time. Now, she went up. She had a little spring in the step. You know, she never saw the guy again. He asked for a phone number. She said, you know, I don't think this is a good idea. I'm not really ready for anything. She wasn't ready for anything but that. She was definitely ready for that. She was ready to make out like a lunatic with somebody 14 years younger than her. Know what you're ready for. I mean, even if you don't know what you're ready for, you might get out there. You might start dating. You might think, I'm not going to date until I'm ready for a long-term relationship again. But you might want to rethink that. You might want to think, well, what's the harm of just going out and seeing who's out there? You know, what's the harm of going out and you know, having somebody spend a nice time with me. You know, let me see what's going on. And something that I talk about is that many times we want our next long-term relationship to be our true love, and many times it's not. Many times our next relationship might be a good relationship with a decent person, and we walk along the road of life for a while, and that's got to be good enough. And then we separate. You know, my friend Catherine Woodward Thomas wrote a book called Conscious Uncoupling. And there is such a thing as functional uncoupling, where you can actually be in a relationship, understand it's not... Your one true love, maybe it is, maybe it's not. I mean, usually when people are in serious relationships and moving in together, sometimes you're even getting married, you don't know that this isn't your one true love. I actually gave up on the idea of a soulmate before I met my soulmate. You know, I just didn't believe in it. So sometimes you don't know what is going to be your finality with this person. You don't know that you're going to share this person's life for a while and they're going to share yours and it's going to be good and decent and loving and then one day you're going to go, oh, you know what? I want to do this. Oh, you know what? I want to do that. And getting back out there, I talk about the 3 a.m. person. We don't have that in our head when we're dating. And that's why I talk about the standards of compatibility inventory. You have to know who your 3 a.m. person is. And the 3 a.m. person is a getting back out there concept that I came up with, that I developed over the course of talking to people for many years of being their therapist and doing my own dating and relationship outlook. Like, what do I want? The 3 a.m. scenario is it's thunder and lightning, pouring rain, the roof is leaking, the thunder and lightning, woke up the baby, the baby's screaming, the dog is crying, wants to go out, but it's afraid of the thunder, and all of the electricity has gone out. What do you do? The 3 a.m. person, now whether you're now, it's a male-female kind of situation, or it's a female-female, male-male, whatever it is, but it's a domestic situation. One person says, you find candles, get the baby, I'll put a pan under the roof and get the dog out. And, you know, they run out the door with the dog, you know, help with the dog, go to the bathroom, so, you know, so that it doesn't try to run back in the house without doing its business because you've got to get it to be in the yard, not in the house. That's a 3 a.m. person, whichever one you are, either you're the one who's, you know, saying you do this, I do that, or whichever. You act as a team. You look at all the issues. You divide them up. You say, okay, you do this, I'll do that. You don't want the person who goes, I told you I didn't want the dog. I told you to call somebody about that roof. I told you. You don't want the blamer. You also don't want the bolter. You don't want dog, roof, baby, bye. You also don't want the person who goes, you know what? Sally's roof isn't leaking. Sally's dog doesn't want to go out. Sally's baby's not crying. I'm going to live with Sally. Those are the three you don't want. You don't want the bolter. You don't want the blamer. You don't want the Sally lover. Bye-bye, Sally lover.
And I had the Sally lover. So like, you know what? Sally's kid's crazy. I'm going to go live with Sally. Because your kids are not crazy. Trust me. It's an inside joke. So when you do your standards of compatibility inventory, you want to know what your 3 a.m. person is like. Now, that's a domestic scene. I always tell people it doesn't have to be that. If you want to go into business, you want somebody who's going to support you, who's going to help you. That's somebody who's going to blame you or your business if something goes wrong. You don't want to both. Oh, I can't handle this. You know, your business is, you know, in the red and I got to go. And you don't want somebody who's like, you know, well, Sally's business is doing good. I'm going to go with Sally. No. Or traveling the world. You know, maybe you want somebody who's going to travel the world with you, who likes to travel or do whatever. You want somebody, the 3 a.m. person, when everything's going wrong, whether it's 3 a.m., 2 p.m. in New York, Argentina, London, wherever, whether you're a woman who loves a man, a man who loves a woman, a man who loves a man, a woman who loves a woman, whether you want to get married, whether you want to, don't want to get married, whatever it is, whether you want to live in the country, the city, doesn't matter. There's a 3 a.m. person for you. You've got to figure out who that is, who looks at life the way you look at, who's going to pitch in and help you, who's going to be a support, who's going to add to your life and not take away from it. Your 3 a.m. person is somebody who widens your life scope, doesn't narrow it, doesn't make you miserable because something happened. I mean, I've been in relationships where I would get blamed for the thunderstorm. Thunderstorm, go to Sally's. You caused that thunderstorm. If you didn't cause that thunderstorm, I would have been out with Sally. What? Honest. Honest to God. Anyway. So you can know what your 3 a.m. person is, but when you go out dancing with somebody, you're not going to be able to know if they're your 3 a.m. person. You have to figure it out. First of all, you have to figure out what your 3 a.m. person is. Second of all, you have to know what to look for. So if you haven't figured that out yet, what are you ready for? You don't know. You're not ready for your long-term relationship. You're not ready to look for your 3 a.m. person. But maybe you're just ready to go out on the town. Maybe you're just ready to have some light dates. Maybe that's all you're ready for. That's okay. Know what you're ready for. Okay, the next thing is rejection. Many times when we go out on a date and somebody doesn't like us, we are heartbroken. We don't even know if we like them. I always tell people, you've got to get the job seeker mentality out of your life. It's not, oh, I want to present myself in such a way that this person is going to want to be with me. You want to get into a mind frame, do I want to be with this person? Now, suppose you decide you really do. You, you like this person. You like what they're all about. You've had a few phone conversations. You've been out a few times. You really like this person. I want to continue this. I want to see where this is going. And all of a sudden the person goes, there's nothing here. And you're shattered. Why are you shattered? I always say in the number one getting past your breakup video is when the person you love doesn't love you. If you put those words in with my name, Susan Elliott, it will pop right up. It's the most popular video that I've ever done. And I say in that video, the number one requirement is wants to be with me, wants to be with me. The minute the person walks out the door, they no longer meet that requirement. Wants to be with me gets off the list and they're no longer a viable option. That goes for dating. If somebody sees that you're not their 3 a.m. person for whatever reason, you just move on. That's all. You just move on. I had a couple in therapy for a long time, and it, the relationship didn't work out. And I was the first one to see it. They were holding on. It was crazy. But he told me one of the things they fought about was his ex-wife. And he told me, I knew from the first date 
that my ex-wife was going to have a problem with her. I knew it. And he was so codependent on the ex-wife. They had such an immense relationship that he could not, could not and would not disengage from the ex-wife to make this marriage work. But he said, I knew on the first date that there was going to be issues. And he pursued it anyway. Maybe your person knows something you don't know. Maybe that person knows, oh, my ex-wife is going to have a problem with this. Could have a problem with the way this one looks or the education or, you know, whatever. The, the ex-wife is going to be threatened by this. Or something else is going to happen. Or my mother's not going to like you. Whatever it is. Some weird old thing that you don't know anything about. Just because they're rejecting you doesn't mean they're rejecting you. They don't know you. They have no clue about you. You could be the best thing that never happens to them. Don't let that rejection say anything about you. You have no idea why. And you only want to be with people who want to be with you. You only want to be with people who can look at you and say, whatever information I have right now is pretty good. I like this. And I always tell people, think of hypothetical questions based on things that actually happened to you. You know, say, if you were in a relationship with ba, ba ba what would you do if this happened? And think of things that have happened to you when people have done the wrong thing. And see what they say. Make your first few dates a bit of substance. Have some idea about the 3 a.m. person and also ask about their relationships. You don't have to grill them. You don't have to bring it up as so, in, so serious, and especially on a first date. But you want to listen for somebody who blames all their broken relationships on the other person. I've always said one of the reasons I really liked my husband Michael was he told me his first wife was an angel. I, I really love that. I never heard a guy say that. I mean, some guys have said this person was nice, that person was this, but I never heard anybody say that their ex-wife was an angel. And, and he was very serious about it. And he knew that he did wrong, but he was 20 years old. The next date in the next bump in the dating road is recycling. Now this happens a lot of times we go out on a date, we'll have a good time. And all of a sudden, we're crying in the car on the way home. All of a sudden, we miss our ex desperately. And what I usually tell people is it has nothing to do with being ready. It has nothing to do with, with feeling rejected. It has nothing to do with anything but the feeling of comfort. When we are in a relationship, we could come home, we could kick off our shoes, we could take our makeup off. You know, if you're a guy, you could scratch your chest, pass wind, you know, whatever. We are not doing that when we're dating. We're on our best behavior. We're being very self-conscious about the way we look, the way we act. You know, is there lettuce in our teeth? When you're in a long-term relationship, you can let all that pretense go. Many times when we start recycling, whether we've had a good date or not, it's because we miss the comfort of our relationship not necessarily our ex not necessarily what was but the comfort of not having to go through these motions not having to ha, 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 you know laugh ha, ha, you know somebody's joke that wasn't funny you know not having to pretend to be interested in something you're not interested in and the uncertainty of do they like me do I like them you don't have to go through that when you're in a relationship. So once you are exposed to those things, you can recycle very, very easily. The other thing that happens is you don't go through any of that. You have a nice time. They have a nice time. You're comfortable. You, you have a great evening. You're looking forward to another day. You both agree. Like, yeah, we're terrific. And let's see each other again. And the next day you wake up, you're pinned to the bed. You can't move. And all you can do about is your ex. And you're crying, you don't know why, you don't know what's going on, it's horrible, you hate it. Again, it's residual grief that's coming up for the parts that you haven't grieved yet. It's because the good day is you're moving on. 
and your psyche knows that you're moving on. So it's like, oh, got some residual grief here. Here, pay attention to me. So spend the day with your grief. Journal about it. Talk about it. It's okay. Recycling is normal. It's perfectly okay. I know it doesn't feel okay, but you've been down this road before. You can deal with the grief. You can deal with the recycling. It's not going to last forever. It doesn't mean you're making a mistake. It doesn't mean this person that you have good feelings about is the wrong person. It doesn't mean you still want your ex. And it doesn't mean that the person that you're not having good feelings about is the right person. It just means that it is what it is. And just deal with it and it will go away. The fourth one is rebounding. And what I usually tell people about rebounding is the best thing to know about rebounding is that you're doing it. It's not really fair to somebody else if you know you're rebounding and you don't let them know that you're not really here for a long-term relationship. If you know you're rebounding, if you're rebounding because your ex is rebounding, you could just say, well, you know, I'm not really ready for a serious relationship, but, you know, let's see how it goes. But I mean, you have to say, hey, I want to rebound. Because the other person will rebound right out of the room. But you have to be honest with yourself, and you have to be honest to a degree with the other person. I'm not really, you know, ready for a long-term relationship. I hope, you know, that's not what you look. If that's what you're looking for, we're not... Right. Rebounding when you're not honest with yourself, you're not honest with somebody else, amounts to using somebody. It's not okay. And many times the only reason you're rebounding is because your ex is rebounding. If your ex wasn't with somebody, you wouldn't be with somebody. So you have to be honest about this. You have to be very, very honest about this. And the last one is retreating. Sometimes it's like we're running out of the, the first date like our hair is on fire. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I'm going to go home. I'm going to pull the covers over my head. I'm going to put on HBO. And I'm going to eat haagen until I'm 550 pounds. That is a normal and natural reaction sometimes to a date. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it tomorrow. I don't want to do it next week, next year, and ever, ever, ever. I'm going to become a missionary. I'm going to join a convent. I'm going to do something, but I'm not going to do this dating thing. It's okay. Sometimes you're just not ready. Sometimes you're not ready now. Sometimes you're not ready for whatever it is you thought you were ready for. Sometimes you just have to retreat and go back and do some more work. Sometimes you have to retreat for a week and go, okay, hang on. I'm fine. That was some freak out. Not necessary. I can do this. Other times retreating is, you know what? I really do need some more time. And it's okay to retreat over and over again. It's okay to go out, try it, uh, go back, uh, go back. Okay, getting back out there is not a dating book. You need to get it. As soon as you break up, you need to get it with getting past your breakup. And you need to use the two books together. But if you are ready for dating, those are the five R's. The book goes into more about them, but no matter what it is, you can do it. If you have any questions, let me know. Put stuff in the comments. Join the Facebook group, facebook.com backslash groups backslash getting back out. No, <laughs> sorry, erase that. Getting past your breakup. Listen to the podcast, Me Lady Talking Podcast. Send me an email, me lady talking podcast at gmail.com if you have any topics that you want on the podcast. And I look forward to your cards and letters. And I hope you enjoy the video. And there'll be a lot more as soon as I get my technology settled away. Talk to you guys later. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.